Hey y'all, welcome back to another episode of Keep Austin Keto. I wanted to go ahead and do a first review on this. I'm making it as we go so you'll get a real raw, honest uh, view of this product. I was recently shopping at HEB in the baking section. The holidays are coming up and I just wanted to see what they had available to us and I ran across this. Uh, the brand is Just About Foods Cauliflower Flour. Um, I think it was close to 10 bucks, um, but it doesn't seem to, to use a lot. I did find a recipe online on Just About Foods uh, website on how to make the, um, you know, I guess we call it a keto pizza on the back. They do have a recipe, which is um, not keto, but gluten-free, high in protein compared to a regular pizza crust, and it does have rice flour in it, so I went to their website to see if I could find something, uh, because it seems to be fairly new and no one's really talking about it. Um, I've got everything mixed in the bowl already. I'm going to show you that, so stay tuned. Okay, so here's what it looks like. It didn't really, like, form a dough or anything, um, and it definitely smells like cauliflower. So um, I'll give you the ingredient list and a link to their website for the recipe down below. Um, the oven set at 350. It says this is going to cook for about... 25 minutes I think it is so I'm gonna keep an eye on it because all ovens are different obviously so I'm gonna get, go ahead and get this on parchment paper it says to spray it so I'm gonna use coconut oil instead uh, because I don't use sprays and let's see what happens here's what the dough looks like after it's pressed out I don't know if you can really tell or not if I get closer that you can see that there's a lot of moisture in this so I'm curious to see how this is going to cook down so I'm gonna go ahead and get this in the oven, but I wanted to show you. Um, I just went around and pressed it out with my hand the best I could, but at some point, like you really just can't uh, move it anymore. And you know, I guess it's like a single serve pizza or you can split it with someone, have a salad or something on the side or you know, whatever you wanna do, wings, uh, if you don't eat salads. So let's get this in the oven, 25 minutes. Here's what it looks like after 25 minutes. I did kind of move it around a little bit. Um, I took the parchment paper out from underneath it because I'm going to stick it back in the oven if you can see. Um, I want it to brown up a little bit. So I pulled the parchment paper off and I'm going to turn the oven on broil and give it a couple minutes like that and see what happens. Uh, this might make a good bread, but I'm not sure how it's going to hold together for the purposes of a pizza. This is the first one I've made. I'm going to go ahead and make another one after this. Um, yeah, stay tuned. I'm going to show you what it looks like after I stick it under the broiler. I hope that this browns up a little bit and firms up. I may have needed to thin it out a little bit more. See, it's already breaking off. There we go. Okay. Okay, I went ahead and turned the oven on broil for just a minute or two. And as you can see, um, it did brown up a little bit. Um, I don't know if you can see kind of texturally what it looks like feels a little heavy it's you know I mean I guess it's an option for uh, a keto crust I haven't tried it yet I'm probably gonna just top this with some cheese and make like a cheese bread this first time because I want to see what it tastes like so I don't want to add too much stuff to it um, and probably some marinara sauce on the side the Rayo's uh, marinara sauce on the side and then I'll make a second one in this same video Yum, I can't wait for this to come out of the oven. I'm just gonna let it continue to brown um, on the broil setting on the oven. Okay, there's what it looks like. I think that's as far as we can go with um, trying to, you know, get the cheese all nice and toasty because as you can see around the edges here, um, it started getting a little bit darker than I wanted it to. So there's that. Let me um, cut it into bread sticks and uh, get it on a plate with some marinara sauce okay bread sticks it is um let's see let's let me just grab one of these and show you what it looks like so it's pretty flimsy as far as like holding up to a piece of pizza but um you know the bottom toasted really well see it's already falling apart um i don't know how it changed that up yet i haven't figured that one out so um there's that uh let's see what it tastes like Okay, so here it is all plated up. As you can see, some of the or um, edges burned up a little bit. You know, it got really crispy. That's okay. I think it'll help at the end of the day, but let's go ahead and get in here and see what this tastes like. All right. Mmm. That's really good. 
the edges on the corner pieces are probably going to be the best as far as holding up. So my thoughts are when I make the next one that maybe I want to make the dough a little thinner. So stay, stay tuned for the next portion of this video. I'm going to go ahead and make another one and see if I can thin it out some more. I might do one egg instead of two also just to reduce the moisture a little bit. All right, this is pizza crust number two and um, the first one had too much moisture in it so I did one egg instead of two and I feel like this is more like a dough. Um, hopefully you can see that in the transition from the first part of the video to now. Um, I'm gonna give this another try and see what we come up with. I'm also going to um, thin it out just a little bit more and um, I think it'll work better this time. The first one, again, there was too much moisture in it, too much liquid, um, which made it really uh, hard for me to spread. So let me get this one spread out, get it in the oven. Let's see what this does. Okay, on this second round, um, I went ahead and put a piece of parchment paper on top and tried to press it out. Um, it still seems to be a little bit too much liquid, but um, less than the last one, it did come out sort of in a, more of a dough form than it did the first time. So I'm gonna go ahead and get this in the oven. I'm gonna keep an eye on it this time. It's definitely thinner. Still gonna set it at 350 for 25 minutes. Probably check it at about 15 to 20 minutes in and see what's happening. Okay, here is the second crust, um, and it didn't seem to change much of anything. It still pretty much looks the same texturally, um, but it was easier to spread, so I guess that's a good thing. I might make another one with, like, less um, egg, just one egg instead of two, and um, leave it thick like I made the first one. This one's super thin, and that's fine. You know, you could put it on a plate and cut it with a fork and be civilized and not eat with your hands. I don't know. I eat with my hands all the time. I'm not saying you're not civilized, but, um, yeah. I don't think I mix this one very well either because, look, you can see all the cheese over here. Um, so I was really focused on using less egg and then I was happy with the texture. And then when I spread it all out, um, and the cheese didn't really melt up that much. So, um, here it is cooked. Again, I'm going to take this off of here, off the parchment paper. And when I put cheese and stuff on there, I'm going to put it under the broiler just for a couple of minutes. So uh, stay tuned, let's see what this one looks like. Okay, here we are on the second crust. I went ahead and added a few peppa do peppers to it. I hope I'm saying that right. Anyways, uh, here's the second one. I'm gonna pull it out of the oven, let it cool a little bit, go ahead and cut it. It's like another cheese bread is basically what I did. I didn't necessarily wanna make pizza today, so. Did not do pizza um, so far um, the price the cost of the total bag and how many servings it makes and everything um, is great this is a lot easier for me than trying to make um, a fathead dough pizza which is fine if you like that that's great uh, for me that just seemed like a lot more work okay so this one did break apart a bit easier so I would say at this point um, go ahead and reduce it uh, down to one egg on the recipe I'll show the link down below and um, I would leave it thick like I did in the first one and not necessarily thin it out so much just because when I went to take it off the board it did break so maybe you could just let it cool a little bit before you move it off the board the only other thing I wanted to do is come back and show you uh, the nutrition facts um, so basically the recipe calls for one fourth a cup there's 13 servings in a bag I did the math on that. I, it was right under 10 bucks, but I just did it on $10, and it basically comes to about 77 cents per serving that you use in the recipe. The only thing that I'm confused about, and I may send an email into the company, is why this says 20 micrograms for total carbs, but dietary fiber is eight grams, so there's something off here, and I'm not sure what that is. But as you can see, the only ingredient is the cauliflower. So. I hope this video helped. Um, please like and subscribe to my channel and let me know what else you want to see. Uh, if you want me to try any other products and review them, um, depending on what it is, I may or might, may not do a review for you. Thanks for watching. Oh, and by the way, did I say that this product is a yes for me, that I will be using this product to make pizza? And as I experiment, I'll share that with you as well.